thank you. Um, first of all, let me say uh, thank you so much for being here at nine o'clock after yesterday's party. I actually appreciate uh, your effort to be here. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, as Gavin said, uh, we will talk about a uh, little bit about what is new in GS Water 3.5. Uh, let me present uh, before um, me and my company. We are and my colleague. We are we come from Vigeo. Vigeo is a consultancy firm for m more than 15 years old. We are based on Barcelona, and our vision is uh, water and sanitation for all. Uh, I am the partner director of Vigeo and the technical manager of the GIS Water Association, as well as Albert is project manager uh, at GIS, analyst in Vigeo, and, and member of the technical committee of the GIS Water Association. Okay, um, what is GIS Water? Uh, it's a, it's a um, software based on QGIS and PostgreSQL, which uh, has a, a huge plugin and a, a huge template on Postgres in order to connect uh, both um, with uh, APA net and a storm water management model to make hydraulic modeling uh, for water supply systems, sewage systems and urban drainage. Uh, at the same time, uh, it enables to uh, make a good environment to asset management. And uh, as well, as is based on PostgreSQL and QGIS, it's very easy to connect with other systems like uh, mobile devices, uh, web browsers, uh, customer relationship manager softwares, um, SCADA, etc., etc., etc. You can use web service, you can use ODBC, uh, what you want. Okay, uh, we are right now here at 2022. Uh, talking about 3.5 version of this water. In fact, project start at <coughs> 2014 in Barcelona. During these eight years, uh, several releases have been developed. And uh, right now we are on 3.5, which uh, I will present you a little bit. Um, but before this, uh, why GIS Water? GIS Water is the first step to uh, manage a water supply company, a uh, water utility, uh, to put water utility on the 21st century. Because when you have a good asset, uh, when you have a good inventory, when you can start to work with asset management, no? when you have topology, when you have good quality data, you are able, uh, after, uh, after this, to create a water data warehouse and to start to work with digital twins and uh, advanced operation. This is the first step. And what are the main changes uh, here in new 3.5 version? Okay, first of all, uh, it has been finished uh, a huge refactor. Uh, including DV model and Python plugin. Uh, everything has been uh, refactorized in order to make more easier for developers. Uh, the documentation uh, has been increased and day by day we try to document better on GitHub this. And uh, furthermore, uh, there is a continuous improvement of existing functionalities. We are very pleasured to listen users and to adapt and to incorporate details, little things that make easy their work. And uh, also new functionalities have been created oriented to big projects. Right now, JS Water is, has been used in a very big project in Latin America, in fact, one whole country, and more than 20 engineers, they draw and digitize uh, water networks, 
And in order to make this possible, uh, few functionalities have been created, oriented to this kind of uh, big, big projects, uh, making a, a good traceability of what user is doing, um, making a good traceability in terms of a uh, health check, no, a health check of in order to detect the quality of database, as well as uh, some functionalities have been created in order to make it easier also how people need to draw, how people can uh, split pipes, how people can fusion pipes. Um, little things, the main buttons, the main workflows uh, was being developed before, but little things that makes uh, Mm, easier uh, to work with. Uh, what Albert will be focused more in, in, in what is what is new in 3.5 and, and what what this water does. Uh, anyway, uh, as we know, because we don't we don't have control about who uses. As we know, uh, more than 30 utilities, uh, which they manage more than 400 municipalities in five countries, and more or less eight million people, um, surveyed people, is the numbers uh, in terms of users. The numbers in terms of code, here you can see uh, the both uh, and main repositories, uh, the GIS Water DV model on GitHub, and the GIS Water QGIS plugin also on GitHub. And that both repositories right now, uh, here there are some kind of, of statistics uh, uh, and you can see, I think, numbers talk by themselves uh, in terms of uh, efforts, in terms of uh, maturity of code, etc. Et and you can find us, you can find the project, uh, the plugin, uh, the user's manual, and the wiki on the jswater.org and the github slash jswater. And that's all for my part. Right now, um, my colleague Albert will continue explaining uh, a little bit the main characteristics, the main things of jswater. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in this second part of the presentation, I will explain some of the main tools and best capabilities that GISWater have uh, right now. The plugin have 38 buttons uh, or tools divided in six different toolbars, which will be available or disabled depending on the role of the user in the database, as Xavier said that we manage these different roles. Having a basic user uh, will have uh, basic tools. A more advanced user will have more advanced tools. And for example, an admin user will have the whole uh, plugin enabled. We have prepared a logical order list of characteristics which are representative <coughs> of what GS Water is, uh, as you can see on the screen. They are custom info, edit tools, Mincat, hydraulic models with Epanet, planified network, and toolbox. Uh, so let's start with the first one I want to show you today, uh, which is info tool. This one is one of the most distinctive tools that GIS Water have. We have developed our own custom info. Uh, so using this, um, user can click on any element of the network, having uh, pipes, nodes, and connects, no matter the active layer uh, they have, and a custom form will be open in a single click. Mm -hmm. This way, users can easily um, consult information about its network. Another great characteristic uh, related to this tool <coughs> is the customization of the network data forms. Here, database administrators can choose which information will be shown in the forms. So 
what can be done on the custom forms. We can change levels and their size and color. You can hide unnecessary widgets. You can also rearrange widgets. You can assign mandatory data and among other advanced configurations like depending values, um, refreshing uh, in depending on the on other values. Also, we can configure combo lists, etc. Here, looking at the pictures, uh, it's an example. Uh, we have the same information for one hydrant, uh, the number 1009. But in the left uh, picture, the left one, we have the default configuration. And in the right one, uh, the form have been uh, configured changing level colors, changing widget order, and of course hiding uh, unused widgets. So it's really easy in, compar in comparison the, to consult and to, to read the information uh, of, these, of these forms. So, and all of this uh, using SQL in, in the database so you can change and autom you can change the, the database and this, this form will be changed uh, automatically. Second one, uh, addition tools. In this case, I'm talking about a uh, toolbar, not just one tool. These buttons are needed to edit and maintain inventory using them and of course another QGIS default buttons uh, users can digitize new network, downgrade obsolete elements, replace or uh, change features, etc. There are also two specific buttons uh, developed as CAD tools, which will allow users to accurately digitize. Of course, other QGIS uh, tools, like for example, advanced digitizing panel, can also be very helpful to accurately digitize. As a database-centric project, uh, of course, all the changes will be automatically saved in the database, so instantly available for, for other users. In this related picture, we see a network with a simple example of a network of our sample data with digitizing support points, which then we can use to add the network with the, the addition tools of GS Water. Another great characteristic is MinCAD. Uh, MinCAD is the minimum cut of the network uh, to live without water one specific point. Uh, here we have two different tools. The first one creates, uh, creates a new MinCAD and the second one, um, here you can see, the second one uh, manages current and historical, and historical MinCADs. When clicking and when using the, the first button, uh, if we click the point we want to close, an algorithm will calculate the affected network and the bulbs which must be closed to execute this MinCAD. As a result, we will have the data about pipes, length, water volume, connex, connections and customers affected by this MinCAD. And then using the second tool, the MinCAD manager, it is possible to do such things as manage MinCAD states, which are planified in progress or execute. We can also planify unexpected start dates. Uh, and also we can recalculate, of course, the affectation of the, the network of this MinCAD at any time. But this would be uh, also important only if the network has suffered changes uh, since the MinCAD planification. Here in the example we can see uh, a result of the MinCAD proce uh, process, both in the canvas having different uh, layers uh, as a result, which we can see proposed valves to close in, in red color and also valves which will not operate even if we close them uh, in green. And of course, the affectation, the affected pipes, uh, was in 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 this color, in, in this layer, and also we have the 
the, 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 the data in, in the form in Canvas. Okay, thank you. Uh, with the data of this affected network, the length, et cetera, et cetera. The fourth uh, characteristic I want to show you today is uh, its interaction with Epanet, which is another main major characteristic of GIS Water. Uh, the interaction with Epanet and hydraulic models, uh, here we have a specific toolbar with five buttons to manage the, the hydraulic toolbar. It's possible to export and import ENP files and of course run the hydraulic model to finally display the results on QGIS. Here uh, users will have the ability to manage different demand scenarios, uh, different patterns and different curves among uh, other custom configurations like network export modes, etc. It's also possible to compare uh, different models using the result selector tool. Uh, and here in the example, we have um, our sample data with a result of the hydraulic model, which will display the velocities, pressures, and other uh, data of the pipes on, the, on QGIS, using QGIS layers. And of course, as always, a log file to, to have the, the, the data. Planified network uh, is another great characteristic. Uh, this water, it's important to know here that we use three different states for network elements on service, obsolete, and planified. This final one, planified, allow users to project new alternatives to the current network. The great characteristic here is that these alternatives, these projects won't affect on service network but they will maintain the topology allowing uh, analysis for each one of these projects uh, using it on Epanet or using it on uh, Mingat, of course, for example. It's also important to notice that pricing can be added to get a project estimate budget, which will be automatically, automatic, automatically generated if pipes have their own their own price. In the example, we have both pictures of on-service network and in the left, in the right side with a planified uh, project. And finally, as the last one, GIS Water Toolbox is another great characteristic we have recently. It's more or less like UGIS Toolbox. Here, users can run different processes which are grouped by roles of GIS Water. Some of them can be used to fix topology errors. Uh, which can be detected with the toolbox itself, or as Xavier mentioned, uh, the check project tool, which will return a, a full uh, report of the health of our database, uh, just clicking the, this tool. Um, here we have, in the first related page, picture, this check project, which I was saying about, with critical errors, there are no there warnings and other info that has have been checked and there is no problem with them. And also here the, the toolbox that I was talking about. And that's all, GIS Water have uh, many other tools. We, I think we don't have more time to, today to explain them, but you can visit our project website. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, thank you. You can visit the project website where lots of more information are available if you are interested. Uh, and that's all. If you want to contact with us, you have our mails here. Thank you.